Hello and welcome to the very first ever Analyze Finance Power BI training. Now, for many of you out there, this is probably going to be the first time that you've used Power BI. And if that's the case, then I'm excited to be the very first one to show you how to use it. Now, Power BI is Microsoft's data visualization and business intelligence tool. And you can do some really cool things with it. So I'm on the Microsoft website right now. And as you can see, we have some really cool looking visuals here. And these were all created using Power BI. Now, what we're gonna do today is we're gonna take some messy looking basketball stats, we're gonna clean them up, and we're gonna turn them into something that looks nice and that's easy to analyze. So let's get right into it. Okay, so step one, and this is assuming that you haven't done it already, is to download the Microsoft Power BI desktop. And again, this is a free download, so don't worry about having to pay anything, at least for the desktop version. So click on this button that says download, pause the video, and come back when you're done. All right, so step two is to download the NBA free throws data set from Kaggle, and this is what we're gonna be using today. So click that button that says download eight megabytes in the corner, pause the video, come back when you're done. All right, now that we have Power BI on our computer, let's go ahead and fire it up. Uh, every time you open up Power BI, you're gonna see this screen here. This is gonna give you some tips on how to get started with Power BI, uh, maybe some tutorials. Uh, every month they do a list of what's new because they're constantly updating this. Um, so check these out if you have time, but if not, let's go ahead and click on this X at the top. The very first step is to load the data into the program. So we're gonna click on this button that says Get Data. And this is a text and CSV file, so let's click on that. Click Free Throws and Open. All right, so we are in the Power Query Editor, and if you are a Power Query user in Excel, this is gonna look familiar to you. Uh, you may be tempted to click the button that says load, but let's click on the button that says transform data. That's just a best practice. All right, again, now this is the Power Query Editor within Power BI. This is essentially the exact same thing as in Excel. So uh, if you are familiar with Power Query in Excel, you're in luck because this is gonna work the same way. Now, just to reiterate, what this is, is it's a table of free throws which were taken between 2006 and 2016. So we have the end result of the game, we have the actual game that the free throw was taken, the player's name which took the free throw, whether or not they made the shot, and that's over to the right side, uh, so on and so on. So we've got a lot of data here, but the only data that we want to analyze is the player name, uh, the season and whether or not the shot actually went in. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna click on this column that says player. We'll scroll over to the right, press control and click season and holding control, click shot made. Now we're gonna right click on shot made and we're gonna remove all the other columns because again, we don't need any of these other information. Now you may be a little confused as to what this shot made is and this is binary for whether or not the shot went in. So if it's a one, that player made the shot. If it's a zero, they missed that shot. The first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rename this table. And common convention when you're using Power Query or Power BI is to use a lowercase f for fact table. So we're gonna name this lowercase f free throws and hit enter. And now that we have the table named, what I want to do is I want to reorganize the player names so that they read with the last name first. I don't necessarily want to sort by, uh, say, first name. I don't want it to say Andrew Bynum. I want it to say Bynum, comma, Andrew. Uh, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to come over into the player column. I'm going to right click, and we are going to split the column by a delimiter. Now, for any of you who aren't familiar with this term, a delimiter is simply a character that separates a text string. Now, in this case, the delimiter is the space between Andrew and Bynum. So we're gonna split at the leftmost delimiter and click OK. And Power Query has split these up into first and last name. Now, before we load this into the model, let's, let's change the name of the columns. So double click in player one and we'll say first name. This is gonna make it easier to work with as we go along. We have last name, and we'll just go ahead and capitalize season and shot made because why not? 
Okay, and just as a side note, uh, when you're working in Power BI or Power Query, you're gonna wanna check the data types. So in this case, they're all correct, but let's see how that I was dealing with large numbers or uh, currency or, or something like that. I'd click on this button right here and I would recategorize these. But for now, we are just gonna keep these all the same because they are all accurate. So let's come up to this button that says close and apply and we will close and apply this to our model. Now just hang tight here because this is going to take a second for this to all load in here. So if it doesn't populate right away, don't worry. Okay, so Power BI has defaulted to the report view. Now remember that what I wanna do is I wanna take the player name and I wanna sort it so that it's the player's last name and the first name. So we're gonna do that in the data view. So come over here and click this spreadsheet looking button. And now that we're in the data view, we are going to add a new column. We're gonna name this column player name. And the player name equals F free throw. So go ahead and hit the lowercase f. And we're gonna take last name, hit enter. Now we're going to type an ampersand sign. This is similar to how you would do this in Excel. And we're gonna say open quotations, comma, space, close quotations. And now we're gonna type another ampersand sign and we're gonna say free throws first name. So what we've done here is we've essentially set up a formula to where it reads last name, comma, first name. Okay, great. Now it reads Bosch comma Chris, which is exactly how I want it. So let's come back over into the report view and let's get started building our first visual. So to do that, let's click anywhere in the white here and we're gonna click on this button that says table. And now we're gonna select player name and a list of every player which took a free throw between 2006 and 2016 is listed here. Let's go ahead and resize this. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna set this table up so that we can measure not only how many free throws each player took, but what their free throw percentage was. Now for any of those that aren't familiar with measures, a measure is how we perform calculations in DAX, which is the engine that Power BI runs on. So let's come up here and let's click on the button that says new measure. The first measure that we want to set up is going to be shots taken. So let's label this shots taken. And the DAX formula here is count rows. And what this is going to do is it's going to count how many shots each player took over time. So we open up the parentheses and we'll say F three throws. And this is just the fact table itself. Close the parentheses and hit enter. Okay. Now off to the right side, we're gonna click on this button here that says shots taken. And now what we're gonna to do to improve the visual appeal of this is we're gonna click on the comma. What this is gonna do is it's gonna use a comma separator for any items with a thousand. Okay, so that looks much better. Now the second measure that we wanna create is called shots made. Now what this is gonna do is it's gonna track how many shots each player made over time. Now I have to iterate before we do this formula that this is not gonna be something that we're gonna display. It's just gonna be a measure that's running in the background. So let's click on new measure. And for our second measure, we're gonna label this shots made. And this is gonna be the sum of F free throws shot made. So let's close the parentheses and hit enter. And again, we're not gonna populate this into the table. Our third measure is something that we will populate in the table, however, and it's gonna be free throw percentage. So let's click new measure for a third time. And we'll say FT percentage equals, now the DAX formula to divide two measures is just the divide formula. Let's open up the parentheses and we'll say numerator is shots made comma, the denominator is shots taken. Let's close the parentheses and hit enter. Okay, great. And now let's come over to the right side here. Let's click on this button that says FT percentage. Expand our table just a little bit. And we're going to format this as a percentage. And we'll just do one since two seems a little overkill. 
So we've completed our first visual here. We have a list of each player. We have how many shots they took and what their free throw percentage was over that time period. So now what I want to do is I want to see who the best free throw shooter was over that time period. So I'm going to come up here and click on this down arrow. And we see that Keith Appling is the best free throw shooter over time. Now, if you're a basketball fan, you're probably shaking your head because to make two free throws out of two attempts is not really something that's all that impressive. So what we're going to do is we're going to apply a filter to this information. So click on the table again, and we're going to click on this button that says shots taken, and we're going to click on the down arrow, and we're going to apply a filter that's greater than or equal to 100. So if the player took less than 100 shots, we are just simply not going to display it. So let's apply the filter. All right, and that's more like it. And we know that Steve Nash is a good free throw shooter. He's also a former Phoenix Suns, which is my home team. So I love to see that he's on top here. So let's wrap this up and we'll add a couple more visuals here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this box. I'm going to drag it over to the right a little bit. And I'm going to apply a slicer to this information. So uh, let's go ahead and click on the button that says Slicer. And let's click Season. And what this is going to do is it's going to show us how each player did over each season. So if I wanted to find out who the best free throw shooter was in, say, 2011 to 2012, I just click here, we see that Anthony Morrow was the best free throw shooter during that time. If you want to remove the filters, just simply click on 2011 through 2012 again, and we go back to all of the time periods. Now, another really cool slicer that you can add is called the Chiclet Slicer. Um, so to add that, come over here and click on this three dot button to get more visuals. And Chiclet Slicer is C-H-I-C-L-E-T. So let's add this. We'll click the Add button. Now off to the right side, we have the Chiclet Slicer. Let's, so let's click on the slicer itself. Click on the Chiclet Slicer. So this looks okay, but let's go ahead and reformat this so that's just in one column. So click on this paintbrush. Click General, one column, and now we have something that's a lot easier to look at. So it's applying a filter to 2009 to 2010. Let's go ahead and click that, and we're back to where we started. All right, let's add just a couple more visuals to this, and then we'll call it a day. So let's click on anywhere in the white, first of all, and now click Line Chart. We'll drag this over here. And what I want to do is I want to set up a line chart to see how each player shot over time. So having the line chart selected here, let's click on season and that's going to populate along the X axis and along the Y axis, we want free throw percentage. All right. So let's click on Steve Nash here and it looks like Steve Nash got worse over time. But if you take a look at the X axis along the bottom, it's actually sorted out of order. So what we're going to do is we're going to click back into the line. Let's click more options. We're going to sort by season. Come back here and we're going to sort ascending. Okay. So now the seasons are looking correct here. So what's really cool about this is that you can click into each player's name and see how they did over time. So let's click on Kevin Durant. That's another uh, current Phoenix Sun. And Kevin Durant's pretty consistent around 86 to 90%. Let's see if we can find anybody who's inconsistent here. Uh, Jimmer Fredette looks like he got a lot better, 95%. Wow, that's really good for 2014. And then fell off a cliff for 2015. So uh, maybe we would want to find out why that was if we were actually analyzing this data. Let's apply two more visuals here. So I'm going to click back in the white again, and we're going to click card. And this is just really going to add some pop to our, uh, our model here. Make sure you have this selected and let's select shots taken. Click in the white again. Let's add another card. We'll drag it over here. And for this card, we're going to say free throw percentage. And the reason I like this is because it's more of a visual call out here. So if I'm presenting this to somebody, they don't necessarily have to look into this table off to the left side to see how well this player shot. 
So when we click on, say, Kevin Durant here, the number of shots and the free throw percentage changes as well. So uh, last thing I'm gonna show you how to do is to change the colors. So click on the paintbrush, call out value. We'll change this to say blue. And let's click in the shots taken and we'll change this to red.